Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. I've heard people say that you can't boil corn in cast iron cookware because it will taste like iron or it will turn black. And that is not the case. And I'm going to show you how to cook corn on the cob in a cast iron Dutch oven coming right up. Okay, just like I said earlier, I've heard so many people say that you can't boil corn in a lot of foods. They say you can't boil a lot of foods. You can't cook a lot of foods in a cast iron Dutch oven because it will either taste like cast iron or it will turn black or it won't even come to a boil. But that is not the case. And today we're going to be doing some corn on the cob. And we got some corn on the cob here. And we're going to be boiling corn on the cob in my number 10 Birmingham Stove and Range Century Series Dutch Oven. Now I'm using my number 10 because I've got quite a few ears of corn to put in it. Now if you just have a number 8, that's fine. Even if you don't have cast iron, this little tip on cooking corn is going to be good. Even if you're cooking in a stainless steel pot or some other kind of cookware, but I'm fond of cast iron. So if you're going to be using about maybe 8 or 10 ears of corn, a number 8 will be fine. But I've got a couple of dozen ears of corn right here, so I want to make sure I have enough room. We're going to be going a step further with our corn on the cob. And instead of just cooking regular corn on the cob, we're going to be making some Mexican street corn. And that is what I believe they call elotes. We're not going to make it traditional like a traditional elote. We're going to use a few other ingredients and kind of spice it up a little bit. Whenever it comes to cooking corn on the cob in a Dutch oven, you don't really want to boil it anyway because your corn will get all mushy. And if you're like me, you don't like mushy corn. You want your corn to have a little bit of a fresh crunch to it. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and fill my Dutch oven up full of water or whatever pot that you're going to be using. Don't fill it all the way to the brim. Leave you a few inches so when you put the corn in, you won't run over. But basically you want to fill it up to about 80%, whichever size pot that you have. You want to bring it up to a really strong boil, cut your stove eye off at that point, fill it up with your corn, put the lid on it, and let it set for 20 minutes. It will be perfectly done and have a nice crunch. It won't be soggy, it won't be mushy. So that's what we're going to do here. So let's go ahead and get our water to a boil, and then we'll just place our corn in it. Okay, we've got our Dutch oven up to a good rolling boil, so let's take a look at it. Let's take the lid off, and you see we got a lot of steam. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put our corn in. Now, once you put the corn in, the temperature is going to drop a little. Just be careful, don't splash yourself. Because it when it was out of boil, it was 212. We probably dropped a few degrees, probably, probably even down to, to 200. You want to be careful not to overfill your pot. I'm just about at the limit. So we're going to cover it back up. We're going to let this set for about 20 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and set our timer. You can go 30 minutes if you like it a little bit, you know, less crunchy. But I like a little bit of a crunch in mine, so I'm going to go about 20 minutes. So we'll set our timer. It's off of the stove eye and it's sitting on my pot holder. Now I did just about fill it too much. Probably not a bad idea to go ahead and put your corn in, finish filling the pot up to close to the rim, and then take your corn back out to boil it. That way when you put your corn back in, you won't have the issue that I have where it's just about to run over. So thankfully, uh, we don't have water all over the place, so I kind of judged it about right. So we're going to give it 20 minutes. We're going to let it set, and we're going to come back and check it out in 20 minutes, and we'll finish up our elotes. For our elotes, we're going to be using hot Cheetos for, for this. Now, I know we're not going to be making them in a traditional way, but we're going to be, first of all, we're going to be slathering the corn on the cob with mayonnaise, and then we're going to cover them with hot Cheetos. The traditional elotes, they will have the uh, slathered with butter and maybe mayonnaise. 
and then they will go ahead and cover them with a Mexican cheese and then they will sprinkle cayenne pepper on top of that but we're going to do a little bit different so well, let's go ahead and prepare our ingredients okay we have flaming hot cheetos so we're going to crush these up probably a good idea to let a little bit of air out just open them up just a tad Now, if you got a food processor, you can also do that. It may be a lot quicker. You can probably put them in a large bag and just beat them with a meat tenderizer hammer or a mallet. Now, be careful not to let them fly out the end. But I do have enough of an opening so the air can escape while I'm pounding these. A food processor would probably not be such a bad idea. And we may do some more crushing. Okay, our corn is ready. I'm going to use my Grill Armor liquid resistant gloves. And we're going to go ahead and get all this corn out. These gloves are really nice. Okay, for our elotes, we have some of these skewers that I picked up. You can get a pack of a hundred or so for just a few dollars. I'm going to use my heat resistant gloves here. And basically, we'll take and just skewer them in. Kind of give them a little bit of spin. Try not to break the skewer. But that's basically a corn on the cob on a stick. So we're going to make up a few of these. I've also got some of these nice little corn cob holders. So we're going to make a few of them as well. I'll leave a link to where you can find these. And I noticed the closer you get to the center, the better these sticks go in. And you don't have to go all the way up in through there. You just need to get in there far enough so it won't just pop off. So number one, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put, we're going to put mayonnaise and we're just going to slather it around a little more than that And then we're going to roll it in our Cheetos. You know, actually, I'm thinking we'll just use our fingers. I think we'll get a much better 
coverage. I think so. Okay, I really, I really like these little corn holders. I got them in Walmart, but you can buy a large, I think, 24 pack for just a little bit on Amazon. I'll leave a link for that. And they turned out pretty good. Now, they're not exactly traditional, but they are really good. You get them all over your face. But they are really good. And it's just a nice little way to, to eat corn. But even if you don't want to go all the way and make it spicy, just let your corn steep in water that has came to a boil for about 20 minutes. And your corn will be really good. It'll be really crunchy. It'll be done. And it'll be really flavorful. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And I promise I'll keep more of them coming. Also, you can check out Cast Iron Cookware on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you'd like, check out the Cast Iron Cookware Facebook group. If you would like to receive emails from Cast Iron Cookware, I'll send out an email every week or so, kind of updating on things that are happening with this channel. A little bit of an insight that you don't quite get from the videos. I just kind of share my thoughts. So thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Mm-hmm.